Okay, we're now going to go and find the true shape of the cutting plane that we found in those two views. And of course we're going to use our cutting line AA. But with this question, there's no specific angle to this line. It's not a 30 degrees or 60 or 45 like our set squares. So we're going to have to use a bit of a sliding set square here to be able to go and first of all go and draw in our new XY line. So what I'm going to do is simply put my 45 degree set square onto my cutting, play, cut, cutting line and I'll put my 30, 60 degree set square over here. Okay, I'm going to hold that with my 30, 60 tight and I'm going to slide my 45 degree set square up until it's just past that front view and I'm going to draw in a, another XY line which I'm going to use just now for my to go and get my um, my true shape and then the other thing I need to do now is I need to be able to project each of these cutting points at a 90 degree to this angle so to be able to do that I'm going to have to be able to keep this 45 degree parallel to that cutting line so I'm going to push it back to there make sure that it's staying steady I'm going to hold it there and then move the 60 30 degree onto it and use it as a T square Okay, to then be able to go and draw each of my cutting lines up and over that line. You've got to hold that 45 degree very steady and make sure that your 60-30 degree set square is nice and flat on it as well. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got each of our, our cutting points on our cutting line projected over that XY line, okay, which is what we needed. And now, of course, as per usual, we're going to go one XY back. So there's our XY line. We're going to go one XY back, and we're going to take a measurement from that XY line to each of the cutting points. Okay, and then we're going to take that measurement that we took from the XY line to the point and we're going to plot it from the XY line over okay, onto the corresponding projection line that we've now projected over there. So to start us off, we're going to start off with this point over here. Okay, and if we have a look here in our top view, we can measure that from our XY line. Change set squares. Okay, from our XY line. We're going to measure to that point, that's 30 millimeters. And then on the corresponding projection line, which is that one there now, from the XY line over that line, I'm now going to go and measure that. And I'm going to plot it. Okay, and I'm going to call that, because it was in line with one over here, I'm going to call that one, and I'm going to call it one P. And the reason for the P is because um, it's for that it's for that outside line I'm just going to give it a name 1p okay it's for the outside cutting plane okay now um, the next one for the outside cutting plane would be to over here by 2 so that's 10 millimeters of course so I'm going to take that I'm going to measure it off here I'm going to mark it and I'm going to call that 2p I'm then going to do the same thing with 3 where it cut 3 but that's not there that's over here Okay, we'd cut three, that's 25 millimeters, and I'm going to go and follow that projection line up, and I'm going to go and measure my 25, mark it off over there, and I'm going to call that 3P, and then the next one over here at 4, take that measurement, measure it off there, okay, take that measurement to here, plot it, and I'm going to make that 4P, oh, sorry, we can't see that, okay, there's my, my 3P and my 4P. So I've taken the measurement from, from over here, from the XY line to 3, and I've gone and plotted it from the XY line to 3, and I've also done it from the XY line to 4. Okay, and then next one, of course, to 5 here in the top view. So I'm going to take the distance from my XY line to 5. It's 94 millimeters for me. And then I'm going to go and plot it over that XY line. Okay, let's go to go on here. I'm going to go plot it there, mark it off, 
and I'm going to call that 5p and then the last one which of course will be 6 I take the measurement from the XY line 73 millimeters to 6 and I go there's my 6 mark take that projection line up and across and over so now on this line I'm going to go measure my 76 over that line over the XY let's just double check this measurement yes 73 Okay, so I'm going to measure that over, mark it off, and I'm going to label that as being 6P. Now, each of those points that I've now found over there, each of those points labeled P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, those are now, I know that those are the outside of the cutting plane on my hexagon, my hexagonal prism. So I know that I can go and draw that all in dark. And of course I simply join them up in order. And of course I'm not going to join 6 to 1 because that is a gap, it's a hole. And now I just have to find the hole on the inside there which of course is a hole here. So we're going to go from our XY line to each of these points separately, take the measurements and plot them over our XY line. The same we just did with all the others. Okay, I'll have to give them different labels, so one here of course will lie on one, so I'm going to give it an H for hole. Okay, the next one is this point over here, so I'm going to take it from my XY line to there. That's 38 millimeters, and I'm going to take it up on that projection line. And again, from my XY line up, 38 millimeters, mark it off, and I'm going to call that 2h because it's in line with point 2 there and then the next one from the xy line up to the point 47 so then i'm going to project that up onto there it's on this line then and again i'm going to go from my xy line up 47 and i'm going to call that 3p just because it's in so 3h just because it's the next point okay and then for my next point on that same line that's 57, so I'm going to go on to from my XY line, 57 up there. I'm going to mark that off, and that I'll call 4H. Okay, and then we'll move to the next one, which of course is going to be this point here. So from my XY line to that point, 67. So then I take that line up onto that point, so it's going to be on this line that I'm going to measure off 67 from the XY line up and then mark it on that line and I'm going to call that 5H and then of course the last point is to go through to here okay on 6 it will meet up with 6 so I'm going to call that 6H and we know that from here because we can see that went from there 1 we called that 2, 3, 4, 5 and then back to that point there which of course we've already found over here it's that point there so now all we have to do is go and join those all up in order. So from 1H to 2H, from 2 to 3, from 4 to th 3 to 4, and then from 4 to 5, and from 5 to 6. Okay, that, has, that gives us our true shape of our cutting plane. And of course, the last thing that you must make sure that you of course do is you have to go and hatch it. And it has to be done at a 45 degree angle. Okay, and also remember that because we've now got a big shape that we're hatching, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make small spaces between my hatching lines. I'm going to make them nice and big to save myself the time okay so nice big spaces between your hatching lines but remember that you do have to put them in you will lose the marks for it if you don't again nice big spaces between those hatching lines try and get them even they must stay even and they must stay dark
and there we have it. There's our finished shoe shape.